How's it going? I'm doing a quick, um, kind of a quick artist spotlight type video. Um, band, uh, kind of a indie pop, twee pop band called Holiday Flyer. Probably if you're not into twee, twee pop or, you know, if you don't like the Smiths or Bill and Sebastian, that kind of, you're not going to like this. But, you know, Tune in next time. We'll see. We'll see you later. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna roll through. This is like a band that I wasn't super. I was never super into or super like familiar with at the time. Heard more like um, became familiar with them really through compilations. I think there was one called Pop American Style that that. Um, had a track on it that I really liked. That was a great compilation in general, but it's where I came to see, to, to find Holiday Flyer. And I think that the first two records, if I had them, I don't, I don't remember it. Um, they were just recently reissued within the last couple of years by Darla Records. They were originally on a small label. I'll get to that as I go through the records. But basically I'm gonna show the four albums and I do have one EP because a couple years back you could buy, or a while back, I don't remember when, you could buy um, kind of a bundle of, of those reissues with, with, some of the, with some of the other stuff. So this is what I'm gonna show. So this is definitely, um, it's definitely twee. Like uh, indie pop originated, I believe, in the Sacramento area, active from the mid 90s, to the very early 2000s. I believe they officially broke up in 2002. Um, it's, it was originally and primarily Katie Conley and John Conley, a bro brother and sister. And so they do the bulk of the singing that, um, especially on the early records, a lot of like really, um, really great harmonies. Um, yeah, so th th they expanded to include a couple members of the band Rocket Ship, primarily um, Verna Brock, who was in there. She's, uh, she's even on this first record, um, and then throughout. Um, and then there's uh, Jim Rivas. Jim Rivas, Rivas, also from Rocket Ship. So they kind of started pretty um, basic and became gradually more and more. Um, band I guess um, many members were also in the more power pop group um, the California oranges like Katie and John were Verna was um, but as far as holiday flyer th this is mostly really spare sounding especially early varied instrumentation, kind of a gentle chamber pop thing, kind of cute amateur, like especially the early, um, not amateurish, but like, it's not like, um, these aren't like virtuosos. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of um, kind of indie, DIY music of the time would kind of live in that, um, that you know, record tape recordings and um, not necessarily super accomplished at their at their um, instruments. Anyway, all right, I, I, I feel like I've rambled and I need to cut some of this. I started to ramble a little bit, repeating myself. So this is the debut album from the group Holiday Flyer. It's called Try Not To Worry. It was released in 1995. Originally, this was released, uh, I think, C probably CD only on Silver Girl Records. This is, a, I think, 2018 or 2019 remaster, reissue, first time on vinyl by Darla Records. It's a, uh, it's kind of, some extended liner notes from Jack Rabbit from Big Takeover Magazine. You know, I think both of these have 
kind of essays on the back. So I would call this very spare, melancholic <laughs> sunshine pop, I guess. Really lovely, really lovely harmonies by Katie and John. Um, you know, I like the, I like those boy girl like trading vocals. Um, like I say, not, not, not flashy in any way. Very twee. There's occasional songs with more like chiming, jangly guitars. There is a fair amount of cello from, from Verna Brock on here. And the drum sound is so soft, sound almost like, I mean, it's not, it, they probably are, play, play with brushes, you know? So don't think this is a super highly regarded um, album. I don't think any of these particularly are like critically acclaimed releases. Um, I think this is I think this is a, a successful album. I think that probably people that that heard this at the like I say I didn't have this in 1995 or nice I, like I didn't have this until at least to my knowledge I don't think I had this until very recently. Um, so I kind of revisited that that kind of was the impetus for doing this video. But I think this is um, quite enjoyable for people that are into that. You know, you like the things associated with Gary Olson or the Ladybug, Transist Ladybug Transistor, Bell and Sebastian, that kind of thing. All of these are uh, just on delicious uh, black vinyl. I'm gonna show the labels. I'm primarily showing these for the labels. attempt to get clips in like I try to do usually in my videos um, just to be an idea of what, what we're dealing with because this is fairly um it's kind of like what I it's kind of like everything else that, I, that I'm showing or most of what I show is fairly out there like not necessarily well known so just to give you an idea try to put some samples it's not always the best way to get across what's happening or like Sometimes just getting 30 to 45 seconds of one song on an album doesn't really give you a picture of the whole album, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so this is the second release. So this this was also originally on that Silver Girl um, label. It's called uh, The Rainbow Confection. So this was released originally in 1997. This is a 20... I think again, at the same time, this is reissued by Darla, 2018 or 2019. Has an essay on here by Dave Heaton from Racing Clouds. Still the same folks are uh, like mentioned or listed as being primarily the band, just the trio of Katie, John, and Verna. Um, this is again, first time on vinyl was this reissue. Remat it was a reissue, it was remastered by actually this Michael, I can't say his last name, Michael Yao. Um, I think he probably remastered both of these. He was in the band later, I think, after this. Again, I'm not, I don't the timeline of things. So I would call this a further refinement of what was going on in the debut. Um, there is a bigger, like, bigger sound, like, more going on, possibly a bit more upbeat. Um, you'll, you'll see people compare this to the band Ida, 
like a poppier version of the band Ida. Um, there is slightly expanded instrumentation. P you have piano, cello, flute. Like I say, some stuff a little more upbeat. There's occasional, um, you know, the band Suddenly Tammy. There's some of the songs remind me of the band Suddenly Tammy. Um, compared to the first album, I think I prefer this one. I think I like coming to it late because both of these I came to late. Um, I think I prefer this one, and I also think that um, I feel like this would be a more approachable listen. It still does occasionally drift towards um, more melancholy songs at times. Anyway, The Rainbow Confection, 1997. release on Darla Records. It's called Blue Harvest. This is a 16 minute long, you know, 10 inch record. It's mostly on the upbeat side for them. I'd say pretty solid overall. Um, it does, the last track uh, is probably the only song that's, that's a little bit on the slow side. It comes with the like CD booklet, you can uh, believe the CD booklet, photo, and it's just, it's just the, the label kind of has that kind of writing on it. Next, this is their third LP. This came out in the year 2000. This is actually, I think, is on just originally on Darla. It's, it might be 99, 99 or 2000. It's called You Make Us Go. The vinyl has a completely different um, artwork than the, than the CD version. This again, I kind of alluded to, this is the one that I had at the time. And really, as far as I can remember, otherwise everything that I had heard were on, or had was on compilations. So this is a continued progression from those first two LPs. Songwriting gets stronger. Maybe there's some more like jangly guitar moments, like more upbeat jangle pop type stuff. But otherwise, everything that I mentioned with the first two holds true here. I think that they have they have several additional players. There's trombone, bass, guitar. That aside from the the trio of John, Katie, and Verna that I mentioned earlier. 
And so I don't know if it's because I'm, this is the one I'm most familiar with, but this is the one I think um, is the most fully realized at that early sound, that more like twee pop, indie pop sound. Um, like I say, the songwriting I think is maybe, I, I feel like I'm kind of just splitting hairs, but kind of, um, or maybe a little more accomplished feeling record. To, I don't know if I mentioned on Holiday Flyer, it's kind of this goofy cover. There's like a barcode on the front and then a barcode on the back, and it it's just a little odd. Similarly, this one is a little bit of a strange. And this one's less so. I mean, the back is a mirror, uh, like a mirror um, image. So this is called I Hope. This was released in 2001. So this is, I guess, the 20th anniversary of this release. Um, yeah, 2001. It's like there's a, like, like a handful of additional like guest musicians on here. On this one, they consider the trio that I mentioned earlier, so, so John, Katie, Verna, and then Jim Rivas from, from Rocket Ship also, and then that Michael Yao is what I'm gonna say, as, as members. So in this case, they consider it, their list is a five piece band. And that translates in the sound. It is a more like band feel. There feels, it's, it, through each song, this feels like there's more going on, um, like a fuller sound, I guess. And it's definitely the most produced of the four records. Um, frankly, this one does, this one of the three is my least favorite. It's, if I was, if I'm gonna listen to one, this is the last one I would pick out of the four LPs. But it's not that like it's, um, it's not like a bad record. It's just for some reason, and I can't really put my finger on it. It just doesn't work for me in the same way. Um, yeah. I think this is the, their most well, like, reviewed album, and I think that got favorable comparisons to... I completely disagree with you, so I, I hesitate to even say that, but people would, like, mention Mazzy Star. Um, I'm not gonna remember some of the other ones. I don't, cause I completely, I, I don't hear them. I don't hear those comparisons. But, I mean, if that's what it took, I guess, to get people to, <laughs> to check it out, then that's what it took. Um, show you the label on this. Pretty plain label.
Okay, so hopefully a quick um, artist spotlight or artist overview um, of Band Holiday Flyer. Um, I'll be back again with, with some other um, things. Um, take care.